up, guys? Jared Welch, RacingDudes.com. It is officially Breeders' Cup season. We are three weeks out uh, as you're listening to this uh, video to the 40th Breeders' Cup World Championships. And I'm going to take a look today at my top five uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Horses. The FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile's $2 million race. That's going to be on Friday, November 3rd, mile 16th on the dirt. Uh, two million grade one, two year olds, you know, say no more. Right. Um, I'm gonna give my top five. I think this is one of the tougher divisions. Um, as we look at the breeders, I certainly think it's tougher than the, the females, the two year old females. So, uh, without further ado, let's take a look at my top five. First of all, let's, I think it's also worth noting. This is a little bonus. Uh, the 14 trends to the breeders cup, uh, will come out in the next couple of weeks right here at RacingDudes.com. You can get it free um, with any kind of subscription. It's also included go in the uh, betting Bible this year, um, special uh, edition there this year. So make sure you go to RacingDudes.com and, and get the 14 trends as well. But this is a little, the little teaser. So this is a very interesting stat. Seven of the last eight winners of this race, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, um, have gone on to the Kentucky Derby the next year. That's and you're like, well, that's you know, it is. It's for, you know, this is a juvenile race. It's you know, obviously they're heading towards the Kentucky Derby. But if you think about it, the last seven of the eight winners, Corniche is the only one in that list. Now again, Forte, he was the favorite. He scratched the day. Like I mean, so technically he didn't run in the in the race, but he was there, right? Um, I'll, I'll go through the list here. It's a Forte, Essential Quality, Storm the Court, Game Winner, Good Magic. Uh, Classic Empire and Nyquist. Seven of the last eight winners of this race have gone on to the Kentucky Derby. And what's very interesting is only one of those horses uh, was the favorite of this race, and that was Game Winner. All the other ones have been, uh, you know, either second choice uh, or even, you know, they could storm the court, um, you know, a much bigger price. So I think what that tells me about this race is it is a very good indicator for what we're going to see down the road towards the Kentucky Derby and tends, you tend to see uh, kind of the, the, the cream rise to the top, so to speak in this race as it, and then kind of set them up for the next year as they move towards the Kentucky Derby. So without further ado, let's take a look at my top five. I'm going to give you a bonus here as well. Fierceness is not on the list. Um, was a huge disappointment uh, this past weekend in the champagne. And I wanted to include them just for the pure fact of like, <clears throat> He ran so bad that it's hard to believe, and he may not even be in the in the Breeders' Cup after that race. But he was one of those horses that, had he won as expected, like I could have saw myself putting him number one on this list. So that's how kind of how the the talent level I think he is, and how poor he ran, obviously. But I wanted to at least mention him. You know, Irad Ortiz stayed at uh, uh, Backwaduck. Uh, just to ride this horse. I mean, he obviously had more mounts, but this was the horse that he stayed for. Um, and, and the horse obviously didn't run a step in the, in the champagne. So I want to at least mention fierceness as we move forward. All right, let's go to number five. It's not, you know, it's almost on the list because of it's hard to not because of what the horse has done. Now, number five is Nutella fella winner of the hopeful has not lost a race was a huge price, right? When he won the hopeful, you know, had it was going to run in the champagne that didn't, you know, didn't pan out. So you don't love that. I don't necessarily love this horse in this race, but I think given the state of the, of the two year olds right now, I think, you know, you're the hopeful winner. You haven't lost. And to, to make things more interesting, Timberlake who finished second in the hopeful came back and looked awesome in, in the champagne uh, more on him in a second. So I think just based off of that, you got to at least kind of say, all right, well, I mean, he is in the top five. So uh, give me Nutella fella. Number five, number four, this horse looked awesome this past weekend. That is the Todd Pletcher trainee locked went in and won the Claiborne breeders for charity. Just, you know, ran as advertised really, you know, um, was, was drew wide, had a really wide trip kind of ranged up like a winner, you know, and then the wine steward said, no, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make a race of this and really looked like kind of looked like he was going to win and Locked battled back and came down and, and and extended towards the end of that race. And so Locked is a really nice horse. He got a ton out of that race. I think Locked is the closest thing we have to Forte last year um, in a sense of, you know, obviously, you know, won similar races, but off, as well as, you know, maybe not, won't go as off as a favorite, but be close to the favorite 
based off a couple of these Baffert horses um, I'm going to mention here in a second. So give me locked at number four. Number three, I mentioned Timberlake already uh, a little bit. Winner of the Champagne looked really, really good. Um, and, and Timberlake is one that, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how you don't include Brad Cox trainee. You know, just like I said, like went off the favorite in the hopeful. Champagne looked awesome, ran its best race. We'll see what the horse does, but, you know, out of a looking at Lucky Mare and into mischief horse, this horse, you got to think, is only going to get better with distance and uh, obviously is running really, really well right now. So give me the three, Timberlake. I thought maybe visually um, it was probably the most impressive of, of the two roads last weekend. Um, number two, uh, this might get, you know, uh, spoiler, there's going to be two Bafferts in these top two. I'm putting Prince of Monaco in the second spot. Um, and it's, I get it, uh, you know, but, you know, has not lost, won the best pal, won the Delmoffrey charity. I just am not totally sold on him going long, you know, going the mile 16th, going longer. I don't believe this horse is the best Baffert. Um, and so for that reason, I'm putting him to definitely could see him, uh, making me look stupid, but, uh, it obviously deserves to be uh, ranked highly because of the undefeated record and, you know, beating the horse that I'm going to put number one, right? Number one, uh, Muth, $2 million horse for Bob Baffert's on racing. You know, this was the horse all along that, you know, they thought was the horse, right? The son of good magic. I have an uncle, uncle Mo mayor. And Baffert had said, like, we need to figure out this horse. This horse needs to learn how to rate. This horse needs to learn how to settle. And he and he couldn't. And obviously, it came back to really backfire in him on him in the best pal. But go back and watch this last week, this last weekend, the American Pharaoh. Man, he looked good. Visually, I, it was exactly what you probably had hoped for if you were a fan of him or or for Bob Baffert. You know, stock the pace. I get he didn't face much in the race, but stock the pace. And then, and then pounce late and just, you know, extended. I think this is a horse that has just loads of talent. It's a, more of a matter of him figuring it out. And, you know, that was at Santa Anita. Breeders' Cups at Santa Anita. I think he's going to be really tough. So I'm going to put Muth at number one. That could obviously change in the coming weeks um, as we start to see this thing kind of shake out when we get closer. But for right now, Muth is going to be my number one horse in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, juvenile. So that's to recap. I got Muth one, Prince of Monaco two, Timberlake three, Locked four, Nutella Fella five. Let me know. What do you think of the list? Who am I missing? Who did I leave out? Who do you like? How do you see this shaking out towards the future as we move towards the Kentucky Derby? Is Locked or Timberlake kind of that that horse I mentioned? You know that that isn't the favorite, but might go on to be really good and get to the Kentucky Derby. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tons more Breeders' Cup content headed your way in the coming weeks as we get closer to the 40th annual Breeders' Cup World Championships. Until next time, I'm Jared Welch. See ya. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track. It's Breeders' Cup season, and we've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the World Championships. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash Racing Dudes right now. Click the notification bell. You never want to miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.